The version 3 compressed their engine. How can I make it better? So in last week's video, I discussed my thoughts between a multiple cylinder engine and a single cylinder engine in terms of their efficiencies. And the comment section in that video was just amazing. I'd like to thank everyone that left a comment uh, of your thoughts. I think there was something like 1300 comments in the first 24 hours. Uh, so unfortunately, I, I couldn't reply to a lot of them, uh, but I did manage to read through the majority of them actually. And the general idea that I got was that people would like to see a multiple cylinder engine uh, for the sound, uh, the, what do you call it, proof of concept maybe, uh, and just because they wanted to. Uh, there wasn't really any reason for choosing a multiple cylinder engine in terms of efficiency. Uh, and the people that chose or suggested to use a single cylinder engine uh, suggested that for the efficiency. Now there was a mixture, sorry there was a middle zone of people suggesting uh, build a multiple expansion multiple cylinder engine which is uh, a design, I can't remember the name of it, but basically the exhaust from the first cylinder will go into the second cylinder and then that will let it expand even more and so on which is a very interesting design uh, I have considered it before uh, however it just adds a bit too much complexity for this application uh, so from the majority of the comments I'm going to be choosing a single cylinder engine 24 hours after I uploaded last week's video I posted a comment and pinned it to the top of the comment section uh, so that you guys could see it and I posed the question for a constant uh, CC value of the engine so the fully expanded volume of the engine what would be better a larger surface area piston or a larger stroke which is the distance that the piston travels so theoretically these options should both equal uh, the same amount of torque produced uh, because they both have the same amount of CC for example the larger piston would have a larger downwards force but the larger stroke would have more leverage on the uh, output shaft. And there were quite a few mixed replies to the question that I posed. Uh, quite a few people said increase the bore size, so the surface area of the piston, uh, because the ratio of gap uh, around the piston to the area of the piston uh, will be reduced, therefore there will be air, less air leaking around. But some of you suggested make the stroke of the piston or the height it travels longer and have the piston a small surface area because what that would do is reduce the ratio of air around the outside of the piston to the volume of the cylinder rather than the surface area of the piston. So I was a bit hesitant as to which option to go for at the end. However the option I went with was to stick with the same size piston and increase the stroke or the height it travels. So the reason why I went with uh, the same size piston but increased the distance it travelled vertically is because it puts less stress on the crankshaft. I've been making quite a few different modifications to this crankshaft uh, since the version 3 engine. There's quite a, big dif quite a big distance between this front bearing now and where the piston connects to it. And if you know about leverage, say this is the crankshaft and the piston is pushing down, it's the longer this length the more chance it has of snapping at the root. So if I were to increase the size of the piston, the force that it pushes vertically downwards on this crankshaft is a lot higher. However, if I kept the same size piston, but increase the offset, which in turn increases the height it travels because obviously that circle rotates and goes up and down. Uh, because the increase in offset is more likely to rotate the shaft rather than put a vertical force, a uh, vertical strain on the crankshaft. Does that make sense? So basically I couldn't make my mind up which piston would uh, have less air leakage, so instead I chose the idea of having more travel because it puts less stress on the crankshaft. So you might be wondering, Tom, why are you increasing the length of the crankshaft if you're worried about it snapping? Well I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a double cam shape on this crankshaft. And before you wonder exactly what that's for, let me go ahead and build the engine.
So I'm just going to demonstrate how this dual cam, uh, dual push rod setup is uh, supposed to work. So the piston is at the top of the cycle now, and as it starts to go down, you'll see this small bolt move upwards, which in turn opens the inlet valve. See it moving up there, and then it will shut right there. Now the piston's about halfway down the cylinder now, so when the piston gets to the bottom, the other bolt rises, and this is the exhaust uh, valve where the air will leak underneath that bolt and out through this hole. And then as the piston gets to the very top, that one shuts again. Now, there are exhaust ports at the bottom here where I hope the majority of the air leaks out from, but I've put this extra exhaust port uh, so that once the piston is on its way back up, the air left inside the cylinder uh, doesn't get compressed and instead moves out through that exhaust port. So if you see the cycle again, the piston's at the top, the inlet valve opens, inlet valve shuts, piston gets to the bottom, exhaust valve opens, and as it gets back to the top, the exhaust valve, valve closes. So this is the old cylinder head, this section here, attached to the uh, throttle diaphragm valve, which I produced in an older video. And here is the main air in supply. Now, I can't really use this cylinder head because the valve, the inlet valve on this cylinder head is uh, at the rear of the engine. And on this one, the push rod is at the front of the engine. So they won't line up and it's, it's pretty pointless. The other thing is, is that the whole of this front section here is just solid plastic. There's nothing actually in there and there's no purpose to it apart from covering up the whole of the cylinder. So in the latest cylinder head, I have integrated the diaphragm valve into the actual cylinder head. So that will just sit on top of the cylinder like that. And then the diaphragm piston and also sort of diaphragm head clamp will sit on the top of the engine like that. And it should produce a pretty compact system. So now what I need to do is cut out all of the rubber gaskets uh, to seal it all up and then we can give it a test. So I've mounted a propeller on the engine, uh, just like what I've been using as a flywheel for my previous test uh, with the engines, and I've also uh, threaded in a plastic bottle, which is going to be used for the air reservoir uh, to supply the engine. So let's pump it up and see if it works. Okay, so I seem to be getting a leak around the bottle lid. Not quite sure why, it is a different bottle lid to the previous ones, but it shouldn't leak. It's only at 20 PSI and it's leaking. I'm gonna to continue to pump it up and it will, we'll give it a test because it should work at 30 PSI. That's what the previous engines worked at. So let's try that out. Okay, that's 30 PSI and it's really leaking now. So this is really frustrating. Uh, I've spent so long, I actually worked throughout the weekend trying to get this engine design finished with the dual cam, dual push rod system for opening the exhaust valve. I was really happy with the way the, the design worked. But I was just let down by a few really simple mistakes. For one, for some reason, the lid, the O-ring doesn't seem to seat properly, uh, which comes in contact with the the lip of the bottle. So it doesn't create a good seal, which considering I've printed two other lids previously for the other versions, they seal fine, up to 100 PSI I've tested them. But this one can't seem to hold past 30 PSI, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, I would try and reprint it and modify it. But unfortunately, I've got to start editing in about one hour's time. <laughs> 
uh, ready for Friday upload. Uh, so that's a bit of a pain. One other thing I noticed is that the version 3 engine, here it is, version 3 engine will run uh, at really low pressure, almost, well, I, I reckon less than 5 psi because I can have the bottle, you know, be able to squeeze it. You know, it feels like less pressure than what a, a bottle of Coke would be if you, sh if you shook it up. And that would run on 5 psi. Uh, whereas this one, even at 30 psi, I can get it to run. And I don't know how well you can see that spin. If you, if I just rewind back to the very first part of this video, you'll see me spin the version three, and it spins a lot smoother. Now this isn't due to the piston and cylinder toler or clearances. What I reckon it is is those dual cams add so much friction that it just can't run at low pressures. So. Although the idea behind having it open the exhaust valve uh, should have increased the efficiency because as the piston goes up, uh, there's no air being compressed because it's all been exhausted out. Instead of that increasing the efficiency, I reckon it's decreased it because of the added friction of that extra cam and push rod, which I didn't even consider if I'm honest, uh, but it's, it's pretty interesting. So what can I take away from this video? Well, I've learned that making an engine more complex is not necessarily better. Uh, these, this dual cam, dual push rod system doesn't work anywhere near as good as the single uh, cam and push rod system without the exhaust valve. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to switch back to the version 3 engine in terms of one push rod, one cam. But like on this engine, uh, instead of having the dual bearing on the version 3, I'm going to stick with this single bearing at the front here and have the cam push rod system in the front. One other thing that's really frustrating about this week's video, at least it's frustrating for me, is that I announced on Patreon that I'm going to be switching things up a bit. Previously I've been uploading all my 3D printer STL files uh, for my patrons, so if you wish to download my STL files you could go support me for one dollar a month and you would get all the 3D printer files. However, I'm going to be making these 3D printer files available for free to the public so that you can download the files uh, whenever you want for whatever project you want. So this means my Patreon will be used for other things, such as I want to start uploading more behind the scenes footage. There were quite a few problems that I ran into with this engine, which I haven't been able to include in this video because otherwise the video could be 30 to 45 minutes long. Uh, if I just explain everything. So what I'm going to do is sum up any other issues and show you uh, behind the scenes, or outtakes I guess, uh, of this engine and uh, upload them to Patreon where you can uh, view them, have a bit of a discussion with me and uh, yeah, I think it could be quite interesting. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. Especially if you want to see a working air engine next week hopefully, and uh, get access to the free STL 3D printer files, then please click subscribe down below. A huge, huge thanks to all of my Patreons. You guys are just amazing for supporting me. Uh, you guys really make these weekly videos possible, and uh, I can't thank you enough. So, thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.